Chief Justice is asking. Under those circumstances, and given those distinctions from the Moore cases, why should the New Jersey Constitution be invited to upset the contractual understandings that members of this community have upon purchasing their um, their condominiums or their townhouses? These people buy in because they don't want the clutter and, and they don't want the aesthetics destroyed by having unregulated. And that's about it. But are your clients being treated any differently than anybody else who comes in and says, I want to open, I want to hold a, a public meeting in the community room? Are they treated any differently? For a public meeting? No, they're treated the same. But, they're treated, but the difference between that and, say, for a wedding or a bar mitzvah, which we're not complaining about, is you don't have a constitutional right to have a wedding or a bar mitzvah. You do have a constitutional right to have a public meeting to discuss. It's their, it's their figures. It's their uh, numbers. You know, see, this is one of, one of the problems that's presented in this case. We're going to need Superior Court judge to determine marginal value of the use of the room. You want to bring Superior Court judges now in to every planned unit development across the state, whether it's 10,000 residents or 10 residents, and having Superior Court judges now determining under time, place, and manner restrictions whether or not there should be two signs, five signs, whether or not they should be 12 by 18, whether or not they should be 50 by 40. Would you agree that, that if we accept your rule, it's going to spark a firestorm of litigation all over the state and intrude the judiciary into all of these issues? Mr. Stafford, I do not agree. Frankly, I heard this exact same argument when I stood here and argued the shopping mall case 20 years ago, or 10, year, 10 years ago, not like, I'm losing, uh, 10 years ago. I was told, oh, you open the floodgates of litigation. You're going to have to decide every rule, every shopping mall, every center, what, what applies, what doesn't. Do you know in the 10 years since this court decided co-offending, which is a different story, but there's no flood. The floodgates of litigation argument, I suggest, is a red herring. We know what a reasonable rule, what the court said in coalition, you've got to have reasonable rules and regulations. There was one more case to decide what's reasonable and how you decide it. And frankly, in this case, you know, the, these community associations are a very tight-knit community. They all belong to CAI, the Community Associations Institute. Um, they have a cadre of lawyers who represent all these associations. The day after this court issues a ruling in this case, CAI will issue memorandums to all the associations throughout the state as to what the new rules are, what kind of regulations may or may not be permissible, and there won't be a lot of, I don't think there's going to be a lot of argument over just as there was. You know, first of all, let me make it very clear. Plaintiffs have never denied that if Twin Rivers today is in fact part of the press under the First Amendment to the United States Constitution, then defendants' federal constitutional rights trump plaintiff state constitutional rights. However, I think the simple answer is that if TRHA is a constitutional actor, as the appellate division found, under the New Jersey Constitution, then Twin Rivers today, first of all, is no more entitled to the protection of the First Amendment when it engages in partisan speech than it when would be a monthly newsletter issued by the mayor's office in East Windsor. So far as I know, it is black letter law followed in every jurisdiction that public funds cannot be expended for partisan purposes. And here we are dealing with association funds assigned um, against being used, assessed, association funds being assessed against all of the residents being used for the partisan purposes of those in power. By the way, in New Jersey, uh, and I should say, well, we never cited it in the brief, but I will mention it anyway. This principle was spelled out in an opinion for this court by Justice William Brennan in 1953 when he sat on this court in Citizens to Protect Public Funds versus Board of Education at 13 NJ 172. That partisan, that public funds cannot be used for partisan purposes. And as plaintiffs' main briefs lay out, this is precisely how 
defendant Paul used Twin Rivers today, comparing his electoral opponents to Jim Jones and Charles Manson and publishing a screaming front page headline that says, they're back, in capital letters. Twin Rivers today is not Mr. Paul's private electoral soapbox. It is the community newspaper, describing itself as such and subsidized by the maintenance fees of all members of the association, just as the mayor's newsletter of East Windsor would be <coughs> subsidized by all the taxpayers in East Windsor. And of course, the plaintiffs, on a couple of occasions over a 10-year period, issued two editions of their own newspaper out of their own pocket. But that's not what Scott Paul does. He uses association resources to advance his political well, okay, well, let's take, let's take that. opinion is the one that responds most specifically to this issue. He says you can't take the members' dues and provide one side of an issue. The, the other side has to have a right of response. And we, that's all we're talking about here is a leave of our appeal brief. It's a 10-point guidelines for this. And it begins as follows. This is all we're seeking. The news pages of TRT, Twin Rivers Today, should not be used for the purpose of promoting or opposing candidates for the TRHA board or for disparaging individuals or groups because of their positions with regard to issues of governance of Twin Rivers. That is the basic guideline that we propose. The remainder of the policy only comes into play if that condition is violated. If, in fact, the president uses the news pages, including the, particularly the front page, as his political soapbox, which probably, for 90% of the residents of Twin Rivers, is all they read. They look at it, they see the front page, and who knows if they look through the rest of the pages or not. That's really what gets play. If the newspaper remains non-political, there is no